I am unashamed. What about you? Too much. Yeah. Well, it's just a, you need a little bit of everything. Yeah, but what I realize is, to, I to, used to You don't want to think, be a drag. I thought when we were filming the show that we were like hamming it up. But what I've noticed is every time we get together, I keep saying the same thing. A Duck Dynasty episode is breaking out. That's but, right. but then I got, you know, the more I'm around it, I'm like, no, I just think this is this is yeah, who these people are. That's what we do. Yes. Yeah, it, because <laughs> I keep it, saying it. Say, Jeff, this is who these people are. <laughs> Like he said, it's your blood kin. Well, I'm just saying, like, oh, well, gee whiz, the level of just <laughs> insanity. Well, it's yeah. like Cy. Si, he can't. Cy si can only be Cy. Si, you know what I'm saying? He he is Uncle Cy si on Duck Dynasty. There is a venue for that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but Cy si has no filter. But this is not it. Look, I mean, I'm down there trying to talk in front of a thousand people the other day at church, and just here comes Cy. Si. I, I see him. He's walking like he's on a mission. Charging. He's charging. I'm like, just just sit out there. Be a be a crowd member. Be a <laughs> church goer. Nope. Nope. Hand me the microphone. And then here's what's funny. You asked I to speak, and he's like, no, nah, I don't do that. <laughs> Unless he's inspired. <laughs> well, he's he's digging he's digging me preaching for sure. Because like every week. You know, he comes and tracks me down. and oh, yeah. you know, Well, I'm up. I know, and Jace is up this week. I'm up next week. I made sure, you know, we have one guy who's a shouter, and uh, he literally shouts. He scares people. The Pentecostals at, at our, were like that. At yeah. our church. But uh, I like cool. having him. I don't him. know what kind of Pentecostals there are. There's about 15 or 20, 40 versions of Pentecostals. I don't know where they fit in. Well, my guy, I, got, I don't know. He just, where did he come from? Where did he, His name is lively which is it fits him. ironic yeah because he'll he'll sit there and he'll build as you speak and then all of a sudden it's just uncontrollable it's usually jesus at the highest decibel level possible <laughs> but it costs us were like that loud outburst hey! that's right they look around, they say, okay. our sound our uh, our guy in charge of the podcast is pentecostal okay. thumbs up upc and then, of course, Cole is is Pentecostal light because he goes a willy down to Christchurch. They're not quite; they won't quite jump over all the pews, but they're you know they they will get pretty rowdy. Yeah, you know, so it's a little bit. I don't mind rowdy. Uh, you know, I like I, it. I, I'm like I love preaching when people are fired up. Do people you? should never sure. come into your assembly and have the thought of, "Oh, I thought y'all were going to heaven." <laughs> yeah, because what gets me. Which gets everybody. You've heard this. This is the most used illustration in all sermons. You'll see these same people at a football game. They're hollering, ranting, hugging strangers, High jumping and, up and, and down. Their team scores. Oh, there they are. It's hallelujah. Yeah. Praise Jehovah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. At the game. At the game. Now they go to the assembly the next morning, and it's just crickets. <laughs> Yeah. It just doesn't make any sense to me. And we used to say, uh, Kelly used to say, it looks like they've been baptized in lemon juice. You know, just, I mean, you need to have some excitement. I know? think there's a few passages in the Bible that have been misrepresented. You know, you had, in Corinth, you had this situation going on where they were given these gifts, miraculous gifts of the Holy Spirit. Well, that was an exciting thing. And people went nuts. So, you know, Paul come in there and said, let me remind you of the gospel. I mean, of all the insults in the entire Bible, I think that's number one. Yeah. If you have to be reminded, if you forgot the gospel, you need to be reminded of it in First Corinthians it's, fifteen. It's easily missed. So or, he or set aside. So yes. he basically come in there and said, you know, settle down a little bit. How about a little decency and and order? Yep. But you know, a lot of people have taken that to mean. You can't be joyful, and that's it's a fruit of the spirit. Well, they say they'll say it's irreverent. They say, yeah. you know, it's if you're, you know, somebody's excited or you know, the, at the founding of the country, there was a lot of that going on. Well, Phil, you, look, you can't get up <laughs> and leave. You, you, you got to talk into the mic. Yeah, you we're still, doing this right now. <laughs> Phil, <laughs> we've been filming for five minutes. Oh, right, Do you need a bottle or something? I think you need. No, I'm all right. Okay. No, I was like. 
this funny thing about these sound men have taught me something. It doesn't matter what you say if nobody hears it. But I look, you bring that up. I know we're we're gonna take some some questions from our powerful audience out there. But you brought this up. I mean, you thought about that doing everything in what you say decency uh, and in order. But you said reverent. Uh, yeah. So they say let, it's let me, irreverent. Let me read you something. When you think of of being reverent, what do, what do you think of? What's the first thing that pops in your mind? Pious, quiet. Yeah, pious, know. quiet. Is that what you think? That's how we use the word? Pretty yeah. well. Let me read you something. Self-control. This, this yeah. just popped into my head, which might be the Holy Spirit, or I might be completely crazy. <laughs> I thought of Hebrews 5 and verse 7. It says, During the days of Jesus' life on earth which is what we're talking about in the book of John. Yeah. He offered up prayers and petitions. Now, I want you to notice this the, this phrase here, with loud, speaking of my shouter, loud cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And if you just stopped right there, you get a vision of Jesus was, he was, crying out at various times passionately yep. yep you know but when you see him characterized on tv or something never like that yeah but this is inspired by the holy spirit i'm pretty sure he was an emotional fella after reading that but listen to the next part of it which is my point and he was heard heard what loud cries and tears he was heard because of his reverent Submission. Hmm. Well, our take on the definition of reverent does not go along with that verse. It's true. Loud cries and tears, and somehow or another that was reverent submission. So I always go back to, you know, when Where Jesus was said, that? Where that is reading? Hebrews 5, 7, and that's a good one. That's a good one. He, uh, you know, it goes back to what Jesus said when he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And for years, you know, I, I tried to figure out what each of those meant, and it's hard to figure all that out. But what I've noticed is among denominations or religious groups, they tend to zero in on one or two yeah. of those aspects. Right. And then you can go right down the road, and they zero in on one or two. Right. That's why, we, you know, we, we're kind of kidding about, you know, going Pentecostal or whatever, but that, that seems to be more emotional, more mm -hmm. passionate. You can go right on the road and you'll see a group that have, they focused in on, you know, mind and strength. They want to be intellectual yep. and like, you know, they miss grace. They're like, oh, look how good I am, you know. You see what I mean? So I, that's just my take, but. Yeah, and, I, and <coughs> one thing I've always appreciated about all my charismatic friends is that they've been much more open to the concept of the Holy Spirit and how he works in our heritage, you know, not so much. We kind of had to just come to that realization on our own study, you know, cause you just, we were taught when Jason and I went to school, we were told dad that, that a studying to prepare yourself for a lesson was 99% perspiration and 1% inspiration. Yeah. They said that to motivate us, you know, to make yeah, sure. Yeah, I remember that. And I don't, look, I'd lean over and go. <laughs> <laughs> and you say, "What does that mean?" I went to school because they were supposedly not coming from any kind of denominational background. That's why I went in there. But what I've noticed, and this, I think this is universal from people behind pulpits, everybody makes mistakes. You know, just think about how many things you've changed your opinion on. That's right from a biblical viewpoint through the years. I'm changing my opinion on things every couple of days. You know, yeah. I'm like, oh, never saw that. Now, things that matter, okay, maybe not. But the reason I did that, I always treat any kind of speech like eating fish. When you run across a bone, you spit just it spit it out. But keep eating the fish. Yeah, but I keep eating the fish. That doesn't mean, you know, I go... 
running out of the building like, you know, it's on fire, <laughs> saying, I'm never coming back here. That guy's an idiot. <laughs> I mean, he got up there saying whatever. But, you know, most people, that's what they do when they go eat lunch after the service. Yeah. They're like, can you believe he believes they that? They call that pastor dinner, where you eat pastor for dinner. So our good friends at Black Rifle Coffee, uh, we love their coffee. This is the one we like the most, Murdered Out. Yeah. Uh, these guys are like military. I mean, they're hardcore. We like this one because it's dark roast. So that's what we're drinking in our cups. But they got different. There's an AK Espresso. What I mean, that's, roast is that? Uh, it's a, a medium. medium. But but I no, like to help the veterans, no matter what they're up to. Silence or smooth SS. That's a light roast. So you got yeah. all these different kinds. You know, whatever your taste are uh, for coffee. But these guys are awesome. We love their company. We love their coffee. Um, veteran owned. They do these small batch roast to order coffees. You can sign up, which is what we've done on their coffee of the month deal where they send it to you. It's called Black Rifle Coffee Company uh, is, is the name of their business. It's fantastic. Uh, so check it out. BlackRifleCoffee.com slash feel. Uh, and if you go there, you're going to basically get, uh, if you enter feel, as your promo code, you can get 20% off your first order, including the coffee club, if you'd like to do that. So we're big on these guys. Uh, love the love that they're veterans, and their coffee's amazing. So it's blackriflecoffee.com slash feel. But, yeah, I mean, I tell you what, though, it's one of the things I love about what we're doing here, and, and we've heard from a lot of you out there that are digging it, too, that this isn't a – this isn't a church thing. This is a kingdom. By, unashamed is a kingdom Bible study. You well, know? and it's we're studying, but look, I'm going to tell you right now, as much as we talk, we're going to get it wrong every once sure in a while. That's that's what this is all about. You have conversations. You study. The power of the Bible is explaining it. Right. There's where the power is. That's The Holy <laughs> Spirit is unleashed when you explain what this means. But, but don't you think that's said that that means you get it wrong. Well, I mean, I've got you've passed on a few emails to to me. <laughs> I'm looking, I'm like, okay. I mean, it's so minor a point, but this guy or or young lady, they're like they disagree about something, you know, and to me it's a trivial point. Okay, I could be wrong. No big deal. But it's to right. them, they're like So I had one that I answered to and uh I said I don't think I said that. No, I don't watch our podcast. You know, we talk so much. I would never watch this, but <laughs> he was saying you that I watch. said it's something really good podcast. that I knew I, I wouldn't have said. So I said, nope. And I, I responded. I said, I would I would not say that. Now, if I did, I was just having a bad day. and that. <laughs> so look, and this guy, you know, he had all this argument. Well, when he, he said, well, I went back and looked at it, and you were right. You didn't say that. But he sent me, a, you know, it took me 10 minutes to read it, and it was all about something he thought I said that I didn't. And I thought, here we go. That You know, if you if you wake up and say, I, got a, I heard something today, and I'm fixed to send a scathing email, you know, I say rule number one is make sure that's what the guy said. <laughs> Just, yeah, but I've got a general rule about scathing emails. Don't write down things you don't like. I mean, you, if you can't have yeah. a conversation, because because it always seems worse when you're reading something that's like aimed at you. It always seems more accusatory, more negative. I mean, but if you just had a conversation, like we say, hey, then it's like, well, I don't think I said that. Then oh, all of a sudden, a, it's, it, it's, it's a cell phone. Disagreement curse. should be talked through, not written through. The, the scathing email is probably not a good idea. That's well, just Phil, you're job. good on that. Well, you don't I mean, send texts. No. So you're good. Or email. No. But see, some people no. send a text and you it's misinterpreted. I just think the the devices that enable human beings on a whim to, <laughs> to hear something <laughs> <laughs> and the information transfer is so rapid. Yeah. Yeah. That you don't have time. Let me put it this way. There's different gifts in the kingdom. Some prophesy, some just encourage, some in gifts of administration. The body's a unit. Each member belongs to all the others. We all have different tasks. 
First Corinthians 12, that's good. If you're going to, and if as proclaimers, which in this case, all three of us are, we proclaim to huge audiences, small audiences, one-on-one, rehabs, uh, prisons, uh, gala get-togethers. We're, we're doing a lot of verbal verbiage. Verbiage is coming out of us. We're, we talk a lot. And well, you if you just mouth, you if you, well, if you just think about it, uh, the text that came to my mind when all of these collateral things are swirling around and what people are saying and doing, there's where uh, unfortunately uh, Christianity is divided into. I think someone said the last count was about twenty five thousand different denominations are coming out of. <clears throat> are coming out of one book. <clears throat> so you say, wait a minute here. That's a lot. That's a lot. So everyone has their creeds, their, their, what they're standing on, and <clears throat> just goes on and on. And then the world is looking. I think if the world uh, adheres to what the Apostle Paul said in Galatians, he said, started out by saying it's for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then. Don't let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. And on below there, he said, the only thing that counts, and this is really the crux of the matter, <clears throat> the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. Hmm. If they see that, all these other, uh, the way things are said, the excitement level, and, you know, you know, I, I'll be given a lesson and I will not be not be aware that I've raised my voice substantially <laughs> to make a point. You tend to do. I that. don't realize that. Well, yeah. I, I began to raise my, and the next thing you know, <clears throat> you're screaming. I'm, I'm, I'm shouting. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah, you, know, you know, and I'm banging the I'm banging the the podium. <laughs> I, I, no, I changed, we took a course. I, in, I changed uh, my format. What I do now is <laughs> to to get around that somewhat. When I go up to speak now, there's a table there, yeah, and there's a chair and a mic. It's a table. One of the reasons I I, I did that, I, I go up and I sit down at a table and I open my Bible, and and most of them they have a podium and with some kind of bench that puts the speaker higher, higher up. Mm-hmm. I thought about that, and I said, you know. I think it's I a said, visual thing, Phil. I don't think it's a plan. Well, I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm saying we are brothers here. That's true. I'm not above them. Right. I don't want them to look be looking up at me. Right. I want them to. I told them the other day, I keep reminding them. I said, look, we're all brothers here. We need to love one another and that be seen. We're going to be known by our love for one another. That's what we're going to be known for. Love's the greatest gift. So we're going to show them what love is. There's blacks here. There's whites here. We're all together. We're worshiping God together. We're eating together. It's 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 a great thing. Yeah. I just think in a lot of ways, if you get theologians on one side and just apply through every little scripture and argue every little point, at well, you're end, never going to agree. I, at the end of the day, I'll, love becomes <laughs> further and further away. Right. And the main thing, well, I think Jesus, what, what he's done for us, doesn't become the main thing. And we're sitting out here arguing about little text. That we I had no what, business in arguing I think about. what you're saying is the relational part of it. I mean, if you get, if you look at it from a relational view and you get that on straight, Jesus is my Lord, God is our Father, the Holy Spirit is our indweller, counselor. If you're pursuing that, then it puts in perspective all the things you might disagree with on things that I say do not matter. Right. You know, that yep. or or are just subjective. I mean, I got a verse for you I want to read. Second Timothy two twenty three, and my point is gonna be why don't we use the same passion in fulfilling this verse as we do any other verse? Because this says, don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments because they produce quarrels. That's my point. And the Lord's <clears throat> servant 
must not quarrel, <clears throat> but he needs to be kind to everyone, able to teach, not resentful. Now, th- here's the key verse. Those who oppose him or disagree, he must gently instruct in the hope that God will grant them repentance, leading them to the knowledge of the truth and truth and they escape the trap that came from the evil one which is my point ultimately it's not up to you anyway god opens the heart god moves you you can only do the best you can and share and allow his grace to make up for your mistakes well and what what you're describing dad is i think in from my perspective is knowing your audience and it it does affect your approach like our church you know our church white's bay road we basically have three different services. We've got the sort of the main one, the big one that's that's first that Jason Missy do worship for. Then we have a second one that's a lot more people without a church background in there, a lot of young people. It's a lot of higher energy, but they don't know as much about the book. And then you got Dad's group, which are almost. I mean, most of the audience is unchurched completely. So that's correct. Your approach and how you share the Bible with all three of those groups is going to be different. I mean, I, I have you noticed when you because you'll do it Sunday. So I, when I preach in the first service, most of this audience, you know, has been in church, understands it. So like you can just assume a lot of things they know because they do for the most part. I illustrate yeah. a lot with Bible. So you might not read a lot of the Bible because you already assume you can just of them You know can it. just check it out and say, you know, over in Acts 3 when this happens. But when I go into that our second group, I mean, I realize they don't know. They don't know. I, I, you know, I say something about Elijah. Who's that? You know, so it, it affects even the way you illustrate, yeah, the way the, your approach. So I think a lot of that's your audience, too. So I mean, it, it is, is, but it's the same Jesus. And that's why I tend to, I think Sunday mornings, I've said this many times, I think that whatever you're together, 60 to 90 minutes, not talking about Bible class, not talking about anything like that. That 90 minutes, I think the worship, the singing, the sermon, the Lord's Supper, it should all be around on Jesus just because that is, he is God. He is the image of the invisible God. That That's how we communicate and, you know, see, see God as real. Right. So every night, uh, local police departments all across America – they get these hundreds of hundreds of calls from burglar alarms. Uh, it's a problem. You, know, you wouldn't think about it. You know, we live out here. And we grew up out here in the middle of nowhere. The burglar alarm out here is the dogs. The barking. dogs. That's exactly right. Our first line of defense. But in town, it's a little bit different. And Jason and I are more aware living in town uh, of the. I have a you know security system myself. But most um, of the times, every time I've turned on the security system, when it goes off. Somebody in my family has triggered it. Well, that's why. And a lot of times you get complacent because of that. Yeah. So uh, our, our good friends at Simply Safe, uh, they use a lot. They use real video evidence, which really is great because it not only does it help you uh, get police there faster because they know something's going on. It's not just. A oh, trip. it's right up there with being armed. It is now. People are scared. Not only will they get caught because they can now have you on know, facial recognition and all that, but plus it's just embarrassing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the deterrent. That's I right. Mean, the number one fear now is people's internet reputation. Oh, look, here's what stupid criminals do. <laughs> well, how many times do you see that? Well, you see these funny vides with some of oh, my security videos. I mean, but it does really, it makes you realize that, you know, criminal behavior is yeah, stupid. It doesn't pay. So our, our friends that simply say they, they protect your home from fire, water damage, carbon monoxide. So it's 24 7 monitoring. Um, professionals is basically 50 cents a day no contracts which is a great deal there so if you go to simplysafe.com slash unashamed you get free shipping you get 60 day risk-free trial so i mean you're out nothing to give it a shot uh nothing to lose simplysafe.com slash unashamed uh and see if these guys can help you out so i i think that should be the focus that, that i mean i'm really passionate about that we can do classes, we can do, you know, have series, you know, these churches will have series. But to me, once you start getting away from Jesus for that 90 minutes, I just think that's a bad deal. One thing you know? that, that, that amazed me, uh, and I learned a valuable lesson, uh, it wasn't my idea. I think Owens came up with it. 
but where the brothers, the seating, <clears throat> where they sit, we replaced pews, you know, just pews, and everybody sitting in rows is the way most, uh, that's the way. American it, churches. That's American what, churches, yeah. they have that. Well, now they, so, ha- the, a lot chair. of them now have chair, these new uh, kind of mega churches. They got away from the pew. It's way more comfortable. It's like a movie yeah. theater seat. Well, what we did was we put tables there with chairs around the tables. <clears throat> Everyone sits at a table. And we have a meal <clears throat> when we meet. What struck me after about a year and a half there was that it really helped encourage to encourage interaction if a group of brothers and sisters are seated at a table with a meal there. The Lord's Supper is in the middle of the table. We stop and we remember Jesus in the midst of the meal. We stop the meal and do that. Which is very first century. Instead of like being in pews and there here's someone seated next to you, and you really, the pews, what they do, I'm not knocking them per se. I'm just saying, if you get in <laughs> rows and pews, your interaction is curtailed yeah. significantly. You're right. Yeah. Rather than being at a table like we are right here, we're carrying on a conversation. If we had food here and we're partaking of food while we're talking here, we have breakfast and it's there. And everybody from the homeless and the ones that's been around there for years. At but least see, then to get somebody's them together gonna say and, and you're the, not being decently in an order. The environment is more conducive to yeah. interaction between human beings if there's tables with chairs around them than pews. I've, I mean, I've learned well, that much. And when you're small, just a thought. When someone, you're small and starting, like you guys did, that's a great idea because you're there. The problem is for most churches. If you if they grow, they get so big. Yeah. You, you can't. How do you do? It? Then all of a sudden, it's like our place. It's like what we're so landlocked into our situation, we couldn't do. That's what you're why just I doing. like the ninety minutes. Focus on Jesus. Go for the big crowd. Try to get as many people there. Plug them into Jesus, and then you do the offshoots, the spokes, you know, of mm-hmm. the wheel. Whether it's discipleship through small groups right. or having these house churches, house churches. what everyone y'all, needs y'all's to remember, group functions like a house church at right. a building, That's which right. is fine with me. What everyone needs to remember is that all these texts we're reading, it was 300, 250 to three hundred A.D. from the beginning of the church, the big happening at Pentecost, the Spirit was given, and they just took off, but the whole thing basically was street preaching and just reaching out in small groups. There were there were no synagogues. When they went to the synagogues, by the way, trouble, trouble came their way. <laughs> when the Apostle Paul and them went to the synagogues, one after the other in the book of Acts, you say they beat them half to death, they ran them off. You say the structured part got in the way of the gospel. So they just went. There were no church buildings, mm. and all these texts we're reading. They just didn't have them. Therefore, fast forward 2,000 years, <laughs> what you're looking at is the American, the American and the European model of Christianity, which, in my opinion, might not be the best model. Right. It needs to be more diffused, smaller groups. You go to China, we have brothers there, millions of them, but they are literally underground on the whole thing, North Korea, China, anywhere else where there's authoritarian dictatorships. I mean, they really, really get after you. So they're quietly meeting in their homes and they're, they're hiding. Right. But they, what I'm saying is you don't want to build a structure with a tall steeple on the front of it right. in red China or Korea. Or you Venezuela. won't be there long. <laughs> you, you, you understand what I'm saying now? Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know where we got into this structure on the street corner i mean basically you didn't get that from the new testament they were meeting in homes that's right well it came in 300 uh, constantine was the first emperor of rome Damn. that became that converted to christianity yeah. so what happened was <clears throat> it became then the state religion you know which actually didn't do us any favors so saying, basically where do these people get this idea though of when you walk into a building at a certain time that all of a sudden there's some rules that you can't do certain things. Now, I'm not talking about evil. I mean, just things. Like, I've seen places where you can't eat. You know, once you enter the sanctuary or whatever, and you got to, like, put your honey bun down, 
<laughs> yeah, don't be chewing on the honey bun as you walk. Don't under, bring that coffee in there. Which, well, which, yeah, that's what I mean. I'm like, proves what? My, which proves my point. The in America, the American model is strong on on organized process. It's structured yeah. so stiff that you move outside of that, and you're, you're suspect of being a little bit too excited about the fact that you're going to receive immortality at the end of this. Well, we can, I mean, if you go to Europe, if you go to Western Europe, you can see, I mean, you can go back about five or 600 years in time. You still see those cathedrals. I mean, Notre Dame was 900 years ago. And so what's sad is you walk in those buildings and dad and I did it. It's, it's a museum now. It's not oh, even, I, a, it's I mean, like people when I was are going in the Ukraine, it. the yeah. only nice thing, they're viewing there, the architecture. Yeah. The only nice thing in, in Ukraine, now this is 20 years ago, but was the church buildings and they were these state run Orthodox, but they're, you know, they're, People are starving to death. Right. I'm like, sell some of this gold-plated cathedral because we went in there. There would be like seven people in there. You know, I'm like, what? There's, That's right. What, There'd be what, a little what, area uh, over there with just a few. I'm people. I'm like, take this, sell it, <laughs> demolish the rest of it, and yeah. give the proceeds I get some food. to these starving people. <laughs> we were filming Notre Dame when we went to Paris, France, and Paris. We were looking at it. And I said, are all these people worshipers? Because it Cause was, it's a long line. It was a long line that went out of sight. And they were all going into the, the cathedral. And I said, oh, this is a, a gigantic worship service. They said, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> they're, they're paying at the front, at the door. That's right. They're paying money to see the, the architecture. I said, what? Oh, yeah. So the, it had it's completely... A tourist attraction. Lost its meaning. That's right. And when I saw that, I just looked at the American model with with these gigantic structures, and I'm thinking, you know, yeah, we came out of that. Maybe I mean, we're Acts seventeen twenty four. God, God. I mean, in that famous sermon by Paul, yeah, oh yeah, God oh yeah. does not live in buildings built by hand, human hands, temples right. built temples. by man. That's right. He's he does like silver and gold and all that. He does not live there. <laughs> Now, what does that mean? That's a hard sell, guys, in America. <laughs> hey, that's a hard sell in America, but we need to be more diffused. There needs to be oversight, but we just don't need to be quite not near as structured as we have become. Yeah, because we're, we're not, not down. We're not down on church. We have family. to be relevant, and we've lost well, a lot I mean, of relevance. We are a little bit down on it. I, mean, I remember when I was when I was, they were like uh questioning me on what my ideas were about doing the worship and all because we have two services and one of them is what is the word contemporary i guess you know non-traditional yeah. you know, well there you go and, that's my point well i don't even know how to describe it they <laughs> they have a band okay they're excited now the first service is not it's more laid back, conservative. It's acapella, it's acapella music, which, which I love both. But I I lean toward the more, you know, contemporary mindset. But anyway, they were so it, you end up with two groups. One of them is dull, and one of them is exciting. Well, not dull. I didn't say that. You said that. But that's what it seemed. But they're like, you know, there's dull, and then there's this. We need to liven this this up. So one of the dangers uh, that we talk about quite a bit on the podcast is what everybody's having to face, and that is that uh, our kids, in my case, in your case, Dad, our grandkids, are way smarter than us when it comes to computers, phones. That's an understatement. No uh, pads, tablets. I mean, my you know my grandkids. Oh, everything that happens from anything technical, software, TV. I say stop. Find someone under 25 years old right. now. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Missy hates it when I say that. She's like, what do you mean? I was like, we're dumb. <laughs> no offense. We're, not you. We. That's right. Find somebody under 25. You're right. Because they can fix it immediately, oh, right? I call my son. He don't even know what I'm talking about. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, he's like, press this button, tip, 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 up, 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 boom, solved. So the problem is, since that's a reality that we all face, you got a couple of options. Of course, the dad option, which he often says, is just take all computers and everything and throw it in the river 
And but just, he has a young guy that works for him. Always. And he'll that's like, right. Hey, he knows stuff. get that. See that guy? So that is an approach. Yeah. Uh, or our, our good friends at Circle, uh, who, who do the uh, Circle Home Plus, basically they've come up with an app for you to be able to police uh, what's coming into your home, uh, your Wi Fi, and all these different things. So uh, basically it, it, it plugs right into your router. You download the app, it really allows you to watch out for your kiddos because i mean you know this this a it's a bad world out there you it's know like what's putting going on. a halo over your house feel a technical it's like a force field star trek yeah this is what it's doing to the computer and cell phone world just so that you're with us <laughs> i can tell you're excited so right now uh because you're our listeners you get a limited time off for 30 dollars off from circle home plus go to meetcircle.com meetcircle.com slash unashamed and then you enter unashamed when you check out you can get $30 off uh, for the initial thing that you get from those guys so that's meetcircle.com slash unashamed and be sure and put unashamed in to save you some money and protect your family so, but they were livening it up you have to loosen it up All somewhat right. but they were a little nervous about me being a part of it you know so they were trying to figure out what exactly are you going to do? You know, because people are like, because we have the other service if people want to go there. And I was like, well. Well, if your, uh, your whiskers are down to your chest, that throws in another thing about watch that guy. You know, in the middle of the American structured Christianity, Jace, you're a little bit. Well, I, and look. Not left of center, you're right something. of center. I said something I shouldn't have said because I was looking at him like, this is ridiculous. I said, well, I'll tell you this. My plan will be to do something in between what we're doing now in the first service and burning the building. <laughs> no one in it. Yeah, we and they were it. like, what? Uh, yeah. I was like, I'm embellishing to make a point that God does not live in the building. I'm not worried about that structure. You know, I, I want to get us together and let's worship together powerfully and passionately yeah. kind of what I, I read like jesus did in his ministry with loud cries and tears it's okay he, god formed us like this it's okay yeah. to show a little emotion especially when you're thinking about going to heaven or the resurrection or participating in the forgiveness or you're a child of god or whatever it's now okay remember, to say yes god's not the god of disorder so and some of the people back in the first century were taking it a little 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 far. Yeah. He said some rebukes. So so some rebukes. So so calm That's down what I here. Said. There's a balance in there between, you know He said something. uh when the when the in the context of uh speaking in various languages worldwide, they the Corinthians had the gift. But one of the things he he said in there, he said, Brothers, stop thinking like children. Right. He said, "You don't want to get to where this is. Uh, it's not wise." Right? Yeah, but so. you know, I think people miss miss the point that if you had the power to do miraculous gifts, you remember when he sent out the was it seventy two, and he gave them that power, mm -hmm. and they all came back and they were just like, "Oh, this is the greatest thing we got," you know. And Jesus said, "Hey, don't be excited that." you can do miracles or however he put that. He said, yep. but be joyful that your names are written in the book of life. Yep. But the excitement that, that would, that would happen because you had some kind of miraculous gifts. Now that, that would be hard to deal with, you know, yep. especially for some people. Well, and in the, in the Corinthian letter, <laughs> I mean, I think it's a reason why, and that's why I brought it up earlier. These three remain faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these in the middle of this friction that was going on at Corinth, he said, in the middle of it all, he said, look, the greatest, the greatest of all these is love. Just remember, you know, and he, he mentioned the fact, he looked, well, I can speak in tongues of men and angels, but I don't have love. He said, I'm just uh, making a racket, you yeah. know, resounding gong or clanging cymbal. Well, we had a problem there. There was oh, yeah. a problem there. He was addressing it, saying, y'all need to calm down a little bit <laughs> and learn to love one another because he had a list going up to 1 Corinthians 13 of a lot of issues there. 
Right. But the biggest issue, they were suing each other and getting drunk at the Lord's Supper. I mean, look, this was a pretty rough bunch. Oh, yeah. Luke mm-hmm. ten twenty is where we. He said, "I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven." Yeah. My point is, though, you're still rejoicing. You know. As long as you I keep mean, the main thing, the main thing, Jesus, him crucified and raised from the dead. Well, and you're yeah, on pretty solid ground. Define rejoice is what I'm saying. If you, you, I mean, I'm going back to the football game. I keep going back to it. You rejoice about everything else except your name written in, in the book of life. Rejoice is there's some kind of action that's happening. If in the middle of a dissertation, uh, a, a guy who was speaking on behalf of God said in the church, he said, I thank God I speak in tongues more than all of you, but in the church, I'd rather speak five intelligible words to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue. Brothers, stop thinking like children. There's a problem here. In regard to evil, be infants, but in your thinking, listen to this, be adults. So you say, you look at that, you say, you know, we need to be, uh, we need to keep it where we are adults here. We're not just running in every direction and it becomes disorderly and chaotic. It's not wise. Right. Love gets lost in all that, Al. Well, and that's it. I mean, that's the fine line when you're talking about people getting together. Uh, but you would do the same thing in your house. That's right. If you're trying to talk, because I was in your house, and you're like, hey, hey, get out of here, kid. I mean, you know, what I mean? <laughs> any kind of disruption was like immediate. A while ago, when you were talking about. Uh, <laughs> Yo, Al, t- we took this class called uh, homiletics. Remember, we took that together. And you know what I learned? See, I no, missed all this, no, you, this you, high dollar. You need a training. class in homiletics. <laughs> well, I, would I tell just you, taught one. You should have come to our you, class. You, what, what I learned is, is everyone has a nervous tick. Have we talked about this before? I don't know. Uh, every, everyone, everyone has a nervous tick that, that comes out when they get up and start speaking like some people put their hand in their pocket and jingle their change yeah and but they don't realize it. Well, everybody's out you, there you've like you got the rockers and the and the pulpit strokers the strokers yeah. well see Side you're change. the village blacksmith yeah you pound <laughs> on the podium and due to your hearing situation you start talking at a level that's too loud <laughs> and, and you know i was i was uh i don't know if you knew this I was nominated. We had a family meeting about it because somebody, went, it wasn't planned. We were just all eating together. And somebody said, who's going to tell Phil that he's screaming? In his <laughs> so somehow or another, I got nominated. So you remember, I was like, Phil, you're, we have these things called microphones. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to just. I have a lot of verses that says, and he raised his voice. <laughs> I'll just finish this little discussion up with this. Uh, uh, out of all the things I've said to particular audiences, I've never used and and Jesus, the Son of God, the Savior of the world, he used this verbiage, and so did John the Baptist. He called his audience before he was going to tell them what he had to say, whether it be repentance, you know, and, and you need to obey me. Both Jesus and John the Baptist addressed his audience, their, their audiences, as a brood of snakes. Yeah, John the Baptist did for sure. You know, if, <laughs> it, now out of all the things I've said, I've never got up before a group. I said, "All right, you brood of snakes." I just, I didn't, I don't use that particular terminology to crank up a, a, a pointing them to Jesus moment. I, I just leave yeah. that out. Well, he, and they were religious. But the one in John the Baptist case, it says, when, you know, it's Matthew 3, 7, because I've been studying that because that's what yeah. I'm going to preach on. It said when the Pharisees and Sadducees came to where he was, he said, you brood of vipers who yeah. warned you to flee from Ooh. the coming yeah. wrath. And he's the point man for Jesus, so it helps my feelings a little when they say, you're getting a little loud. I said, calm down here. I'm trying to Yeah, but you this. remember the argument we had that day? I said, Phil, you're you're screaming. It, it's I, I was, you were defending your passion. You're like, hey, they raised their voice. I was like, they didn't have a microphone. <laughs> they had they, When it says Peter raised his voice and addressed the crowd, well, of course he did. He didn't have a mic. He had to yeah. say, oh, 
boy. I understand. I, he's screaming, but it doesn't sound like I said, you're hurting my head. It's plus, so plus you, no matter what, uh, how I've tried, <laughs> I will say that if you have, if you've let the, the let, let the truth come out about it and say, I, I've never owned a cell phone, so I don't know quite how that works. <laughs> Well, you've already, they're saying, yeah, okay, we got one about half a bubble off here. He's All not, right. He's not, in, cell phone. he's not in tune with, with, with cell phones. He's not into that. So you scream into you the get mic. a label. You get a label. Well, well look, so, come across so, as so here's, so perfect. I'm not sure. I'm not quite sure why I, I never uh, said, but, you know, give me a cell phone. People actually gave me as gifts a cell phone, and I would throw it to the kids. And they would grab it. And they went for it. That's like throwing fifteen one hundred dollar bills to them. You could have sold it for a thousand. So, so, but, I just decided not. I don't know whether it was a God thing or I just so said, look. Everybody no. has their style. You know, we just we just did a homilies class. We're doing it right now on Wednesday nights. Did you tell them what your nervous tick is? Yeah. I told, did I, you tell them who pointed it out? Was it you or Missy? No, it's me. Oh. I have a talent. I have very few talents in life. One of them is I spot people's nervous tics quickly. Yeah. yeah. And so he told me you, about mine. Yeah. And you yeah. and you did it Sunday, by the way. I know. Because you, you can't help. You don't know you're doing. It's involuntary. You want to tell tell him what it is? You can tell. Al, when he first gets up there, he reach and tugs his ear. Like Carol Burnett. Yeah, look, it's like this move. He'll get up, you know, and he's like, hey, he's telling a joke, and he, he'll he tug that ear. He's tugging it. Not constantly, it, but... I mean, I, look, yeah. of all the nervous ticks, that's a good one because that's not bothering me. And it doesn't you know, draw a lot of attention. It doesn't draw... T- and you never leave... Have you ever noticed him doing that? Nope. He does it every time he speaks. Never he grabs noticed. that ear. I'll lean over I told and tell Missy, class. I said, he's tugging on that ear. <laughs> <laughs> I told our class about it. But it was interesting because so so Gary Osborne's in our class. And they're, they're, it's, we taught homiletics and hermeneutics. And now everybody in the class is like doing these little 10-minute speeches. So we're kind of like critiquing each other and you know trying to help everybody get better. It's been really good. So what's the difference between homiletics and homer? No, homiletics. Homiletics is how you go about, yeah, speaking as far as uh, enunciating your words, your outlines. How do you outline? Uh, These these nervous these ex commercial fishermen and whatnot, unschooled. That's right. And ordinary men was what sent a wave of shock to the Pharisees. Well, that's me. I'm an unschooled, but you got to remember. It's all in, you know, what you're representing. I get up there, and a lot of the things that the homiletics class would tell you don't ever do, I do because I'm just a normal – people don't think I'm a professional speaker, you know. Right. So I – like silence. You know, people are scared of – well, I guess that is a homiletical it view. Is. They, they do things because they're scared of silence. So maybe, well, let me finish this point. Maybe because of this class, instead of being scared of silence, I embrace the silence. You know, a lot of times I'll just get up there and I'm just looking, and people laugh. They, the I, it's not silence is not a bad thing. Actually, it's actually it draws people in. So hermeneutics is how you study the Bible. It's it's approached. I would just say, as I thumb through the pages of this, the sword of the spirit. Uh, I would just interject at this point and say uh, I've never run up on the term hominutics or homo. <laughs> that's well, neither. Hominutics is not a word, so that's yeah, why you have that. That's a. a yeah, what? Homo, <laughs> that's the homo- mule. Homiletics. That's a uh, mule. See, yeah, homiletics. So, where's Herman, that text that talks hermeneutics, about homiletics? Uh, uh, hermeneutics well, and homiletics have nothing. That That's not. That's like two different. That's like a. She up in a car. I like ordinary unschooled. I like that's one I like. Well, you won't find it a makes rit- me feel better. You won't find arithmetic in there either, but it's, it's good to learn. Do you so, want to tell them my tick? Well, wait, wait a minute. Let me let me get my point, then you tell. Okay. So Gary Osborne, when he spoke, he said, "When I was growing up, I heard two speakers. I mean, that's the two people that preached to me and taught me. It was you, Phil, and me." And he says, "So when I started speaking, you know, now because Gary's a really good teacher." He was like, so first I tried to be like Phil. Disaster. He said, you know, I couldn't. <laughs> he said, I could. I got up and I'm, you know, trying to be passionate, but it just, it wasn't me. He says, so then I thought, well, maybe I need to be like Al. So he said, I, I, I tried to be funny and, and put humor in. Yeah. Disaster. 
he said, you know, he's a lawyer. He, you know, he's analytical. So yeah. he, he's like, that's my deal. So when he goes into a text, that's the way he does. It. He, he presents sides and looks at he it. He has a great mind. He's a great mind. So I thought that was interesting when you talk about how well, I've heard him speak. He's a good speaker. He's really good. So, but he figured out, and it was good for our class to hear, you can't be somebody else. No, you got to be you. It's that like was a people. very good, uh, a very good thing for him to yeah, reflect I, on. I thought it was great, and it was it was really good for the class. Because well, we know even from doing Duck Dynasty, these these people would try to create humor, like the producers and all. Sure, because we're all looking at them like, well, that's not funny, and and we would turn the camera on, and we're being ourselves, and and the More humor, too. like, came out of that, like. You know, people that, you know, they, I meet all these people in these VIP meet and greets, and they're like, boy, you're funny, you know. And, and you know you know how it is. Yep. Once you become known, a celebrity or whatever, people like, say something funny. And so I'm like, that's not how it works. You know what I mean? I, I'm living my life. Make me laugh. What you think is funny, I don't think's funny. They're like, boy, I remember this time you said that. And they, you know, I, I got a shirt like that. I was like, I don't, I still don't think that's funny. <laughs> it was just something I said. It was not funny. You think it's funny. Yep. So I but my point is when you speak, the worst thing you can do is try to be funny. Right. If you try, it's pretty much guaranteed to fail. You yep. just think about it. A lot of times I'm speaking, I'm talking, and everybody laughs and I'm like, you know, you have to go on, but you start thinking back, well, why did they think that was funny? Yeah, you know, because it wasn't funny to me. Right. I was being serious. So I but don't know. I so hope tell them what, tell what your tick is. So that I don't know. That that that's why I'll look for it Sunday. I'm See, not I sure try either. since I'm real self conscious about others. Now, used to I had a problem. <laughs> I got this from Phil because my number one fear in life, I've said many times, was public speaking. I just didn't want anything to do with it. I mean, and I, you I, ended up there anyway. Well, I think it's because God takes whatever you're the weakest in and He turns it into a strength. I, I really believe that. Yeah. And because uh, that that was it for me. I mean, point. I've told this hundreds of times, you know, when I went to speech class in ninth grade, I thought that was going to help me, you know, with my English grammar. Cause you know, let's face it, your wife, our mom <laughs> took a wrong turn when it came to English. <laughs> Norm Crosby. <laughs> yeah. It's like half of her words <laughs> are like, what? It, you know, it's a version, kind of like what you were doing with hermeneutic a while ago. Homo, Hom, hermeneutic. Hermeneutic. And so <laughs> a you, merger. Yeah, you develop That's all these. That's actually a good class, hermeneutics. Do both. Yeah. And, so, uh, but look, so, anyway. so here's what's ironic. Jace and I were in school together, and I thought Jace, was, and we had to speak at chapel, because you're speaking in front of your your fellow students and all the instructors, and you ain't never done, done this before, you know? So it was very nerve wracking to me. So you yeah, got the, you've got the, the, you've got the, the guys you're teaching. You got their pad. Out. Oh yeah, they're listening and they're they're basically yeah. critiquing. They are vetting and critiquing. So you. I felt high pressure in those situations, but Jace was much more natural. So I thought through preaching school, I thought, well, I'm not really ever going to be a speaker or preacher. And that's more Jace's thing. I'm going to be something doing something else, you know, teaching or whatever. And yet it was ironic that I wound up spending, you know, my whole life doing it. So And I really didn't in a official capacity. I mean right. I, but you know what? I, I would be nervous about doing it. But once I got up there, I just thought, forget all that, I'm just gonna be you know, I, I've always that's like my trigger mechanism is like I'm just gonna be real. Right or wrong. That's yep. all I got. Yeah. You know what I mean? If I remember what I prepared, it's fine. Good, good policy, if I don't Jason. But I can't, you know, the people that they write it all down, I don't know, you know, yeah. and they're reading it. It just, to me, you just, you got to study, you put the time in, you focus on the important aspects of, you know, sharing Jesus, whatever. Then you just got to get up there and be real. I mean, let's face it. You do. And you got to use your strength. So it's a good, it's a good, good, good thinking, Chase. It is. Well, that's a good discussion. We, we went all over the roadmap with that one. What do we call that? A potpourri? <laughs> potpourri. <laughs> <laughs> we are so glad you're watching and listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Be sure to like us on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube and iTunes, 
That's going to keep you up to date with all the new episodes. And it's also going to let other people find out about our podcast. So keep spreading the word and watching and listening to Unashamed with Phil Robertson. 